welcome everyone. In terms of, a, of an introduction, today we are going to be talking about an issue that has, I have seen in the market when I've been discussing agile frameworks and processes and products with customers out there. Agile has been out there for a little bit and, and customers are becoming more savvy at it and it's start, starting to move across and become more of an enterprise software development life cycle. And, and when that starts to happen, there's a lot of interaction between different groups within an organization. In terms of the agenda today, uh, we're going to be going through and discussing this new issue. And so it's probably not new, but this issue that a lot of customers are asking me about in terms of this agile process. And when we address this issue, this particular issue is access to environments. So um, we're talking about not necessarily your, your initial dev environment, but we're talking about the environments in between you know, um, where you're developing to production. And so the, depending on the customer, those environments might involve integration testing environments. They might involve uh, user acceptance testing environments, regression testing environments, and performance testing environments. So lots of different customers are accommodating this differently. And um, especially with virtualization, um, this comes into play. And the ability to, to handle all of these different stages and all these different environments becomes pretty complex. And so what we want to go through today is to show you a very easy solution that's very flexible and very nimble um, for a, a cloud-based solution for your dev and testing environment that fits within the, the agile methodology very easily. And so when we start to get into the actual solution, what we're going to be talking about is HP Agile Manager and SkyTap. Combine these two integrated solutions provide dev and test a simple way to accommodate the need for environments as they move as a company moves through sprint execution. So we'll get into that. So when we talk about the agile life cycle, no matter if you're Scrum, no matter if you're Kanban or Save or Hybrid, your process probably looks pretty similar to this from a high level. And just about every customer I talk to it has to deal with idle time at, some, at different stages in the sprint execution. Right? And these, this idle time is usually due to waiting for an environment to be ready to either work on or test on. And this idle time can be anywhere from four hours to, as in some cases, eight weeks. And that idle time becomes a problem when teams are working under the gun, working in an agile software development life cycle, and the velocity of a sprint becomes a crucial performance indicator of how effective the team is performing. And so when we start to look at how software is delivered and where this idle time comes into play, um, this idle time can come into play a, a number of different phases within the sprint. Right? And so when we come off an existing sprint, we're us we usually have a build. Or if we're starting from scratch, um, we might just have a base uh, install. And so when we have this build or base install, the next level or the next time we need an environment is when the developers move into um, integration testing. And so this integration testing involves committing their code changes and understanding how those new commits are going to break anything that is existing or um, commits from lots of different members on the team, how they're going to break or if they're going to break and how the unit testing uh, succeeds and the coverage of that. And so that whole phase of integration testing usually happens in the existing build where dev is continuing to happen. And that can, that's, that can be very complex and cause a lot of problems. But it's just not realistic in a lot of environments to have separate individual um, 
build environments for each developer to, to do commits to, to do initial integration testing. That's the case nowadays. What we're going to demonstrate today is actually with SkyTap and Agile Manager, the ability to go in and spin up these individual environments very quickly per developer to, to accommodate this integration testing so you can do that well. And so a lot of companies skip or, or do um, kind of a, a high overview of integration testing and then move on to QA testing, right? And again, once the developers have committed their code to the build environment and you ran a build, now how do you hand that off to, to test? Is test testing in, in the build environment or do they have their own environment? Does ops have to get involved, build out a test environment, drop the build onto it for test? How, how, you know, how long does that take? How many people is that? What's the process for that? And again, more idle time can, can be introduced into the sprint. And so, again, we're going to show you how within about one or two minutes, we can clone an environment, hand that off to test, and test can be up and running. So there's two use cases right there. Another use case that we talk about is once a defect is uncovered. So now, how does the developer go in and, and recover that defect? How do they find out? Now where do they develop? Right? Are they going to do that development and that discovery, rediscovery, and build? Nope. Our suggestion to you is basically going into a the same cloned environment where the defect was found and um, doing the triage through that. So again, we're going to show you how we can pretty much eliminate this idle time in between the different phases or stages or swim lanes of sprint execution. So when we get into this, so this is the Agile process from a high-level point of view, right? We've, we've got the release planning, the sprint, and sprint execution. For today's demo and today's discussion, we're going to be focused in on the sprint execution. And, you know, Agile integrates with a tremendous amount of other groups and solutions out there. And so this is the integration we're going to be talking about today, and that is virtualized environments for dev and test. So when we bring this down to the sprint execution phase, right? in that phase, we, as I mentioned, we have a number of, of different swim lanes or different stages that we can go through. And so we're going to get into that. I'm going to show you how we manage all of that um, within the sprint execution and how we are automatically spinning up environments or giving developers access to clone different environments how this all happens very easily and very simply, and there's no downtime. So as we get into this process, we're going to be starting in um, Agile Manager, and then we're going to be moving into SkyTap. And I'm going to be jumping back and forth between the two products to show you how this all works out. So let's move into the demo at this point in time. So as I said, we're going to be tackling this demo as if we're going through the process. So we are going to start in Agile Manager. So this is where our Agile process kicks off, right? So Agile Manager is very similar to like a JIRA or ver a version one or a Rally, which are all task management solutions. So this is where business users or developers come in and log their requests, their user stories, if there's defects found, you might log them in something like ALM or Quality Center or Agile Manager, they synchronize. So here is our backlog. The backlog is a listing of all of our work that needs to be accommodated. And so when we're ready to move in to sprint execution, right, within a release, we've got two releases set up within here, we move into this view called release management. And I am Specifically in release one, release one lasts throughout the end of this year, and then we move into release two. But within uh, release one, I have, I think I have 13 sprints, and I'm in sprint five. So I have set up my sprints to be two weeks long. You know, that's, every customer does that differently, and so it, it doesn't really matter. The solutions handle that just fine. And so as you can see here, within sprint five, I have a number of user stories that have already been assigned to this backlog. 
And what we do is we tend to move into this view called the storyboard. Now the storyboard allows us to look at the user stories in terms of the various stages within the sprint. Right? So we add a user story to the sprint backlog, it's in planning, and now developers are working on it so it's in progress. Within these phases, I've added swim lanes. So we've got the development swim lane, integration testing, actual um, regression testing. And, and so within this in progress phase, I've got three different swim lanes. As you, uh, developers are working on these user stories, they are capturing information about the environment they're working on. So for example, when the developers are ready to move and work on a user story, they move to a task board. And they create, and we create very tasks. And tasks are just a breakdown of the user story, and they get assigned to a specific developer. So, for example, task one is assigned to me, and so I get this, and I'm working on that. I move this into um, in progress. When I am ready to start doing my integration testing, okay? There's there's lots of different levels of integration integration testing, so. Um, but one of the use cases I mentioned that a lot of teams ignore is allowing the developer to commit changes to an environment that no one else is committing to, to see if there's going to be any breakage uh, that occurs at that level. And so this is when we move into our virtualized environment in SkyTap. And so in SkyTap, I talked too long, I'll log back in here, give me a second. The application that we are developing against just happens to be a sample application um, on WebSphere. So for example, I've got my WebSphere plants, right? And if I came in here and looked at my WebSphere plants, let me make sure I've got the right IP address, I'll show you what the application looks like. Okay, so this is my application. If, it, if any of you have ever done WebSphere, this is a sample that comes with the install. So I can order flowers, I can order trees, pretty, pretty simple application. And so I've got a base install of that application. And you can see here, I started with this base install. Now as I am going through my sprint execution, as I am um, finishing a sprint and moving from one sprint to the next, I am doing new builds and setting up new environments to continue working forward on. And this is being able to create these environments simply and easily it, in the SkyTap solution is what gives developers and testers the ability to go in and do this extra testing, to have no idle downtime. So for example, what we're looking at in SkyTap here, if you're familiarized with virtualization, this will probably be a little bit of a review, but if you're not, is so these are called configurations. So if you look at my base WebSphere plants, this is where I started. A configuration is comprised of just a number of machines, right? Virtual machines. So this is an example of where I have a web, a web logic application server, and then I have a database server. The nice thing about the SkyTap virtualized software is I can create these configurations very, very easily for example, or I can add to them. So when I do that, I come into this add a VM. And the nice thing about SkyTap is they have a library of existing images. So this isn't that big of a deal in, for a system admin or for people in operations because they are used to building environments, installing operating systems, setting up, you know, networking, all that, and routing. Um, but on the dev side, usually it's developers and testers really just focus on code. And so having this library to pick from, I can come in here and simply select if I wanted to add, maybe I want to add a Windows 8 environment to this and then install an IDE in here. Or I wanted to add another Windows server so I can install my Subversion or Jenkins in here. I can start with one of these templates from SkyTap. 
If I have a system administrator who uses virtualization templates, I can actually import those templates in here as well into SkyTap. And so lots of ways to get at templates. Once I select what I want, I go ahead and click Add. And then when I come back in to my configuration, you can see it simply added another machine. And I can spin up this machine by hitting Play and then remoting into it like I would normally remote into a desktop. Now there's something, there's some elements in here that are really important to note. Again, um, there's a lot of virtualization and cloud-based software out there, but what makes SkyTap very applicable to developers and testers is it's automatically, um, how it automatically handles the networking, uh, the ports, all of that kind of interconnectivity of environments within um, a customer's uh, network. And so when I added this machine, you can see when I click on these little, this little settings box that it automatically adds an IP address. And so within a configuration, SkyTap handles the networking of this automatically. Everything within this configuration is within a subnet. And so they can talk to each other without me having to figure out firewalls or ports or anything like that. And again, from a development point of view and from a tester point of view, that saves us a tremendous amount of time. And so that becomes very, very important. And so once I have this environment set up, this becomes a configuration. And so these configurations exist out here. And when I'm ready as a developer, right? So as a developer, if we come back in here, I have finished my task. I'm ready to commit my changes and do my integration testing to see if I've broken anything with my changes. So the easiest way to do that is to come in here, go off of our base build, right? Depending on which sprint we're on, this is where we're at right here, and just make a copy. So now when I come in here, I go ahead and clone or copy that configuration. I'm going to use a naming convention. And within about, it takes about one or two minutes for this to copy. We'll come back out here. So this is still in the copying process. I will have my own environment that I can connect to and that I can commit to and I can try things out with. But each developer can do this. And so you can do this integration testing at a developer level with those commits. And then once everyone's gone through that, then everyone can come back in and commit back into the main build or, do, or add those commits and, and redo a build um, from the original clone. And so when I do that, I talked about the different automatic network configuration, right? And so when I accessed this original WebSphere plant from this IP address, so if you remember when I came out here, I use that IP address and I can interact with the application. So when my, my new configuration cloned from this one spins up, all I have to do is come in here and assign it a new IP address. So if I come into my settings for my configuration, and I go ahead and say, right, this, is, this one's already being utilized, so I detach that, and then I add a new IP address from a list that's available to me. Now when I spin this up, it's a self-contained environment accessible from that new IP address. And so we'll go ahead and spin this up, and after a couple minutes I'll come back in and I will show you that. So as a developer, it's very easy for me to be up and running and trying things out. So when we come back in to Agile Manager, now when I'm done with my task and I've done my integrated testing, 
right? I can move this user story out of integrated testing into functional testing or regression testing, them, typically is the, is the term they use. So now we choose which environment, again, we want to clone. And once we copy it and cl or clone it, we hand that off to test. And so now test can come in and access the environment and have an environment to do their testing again. And so you can see I've done that in, during Sprint 2. Right? We got done with our integration testing. Everyone committed to the main build. We did a new build. And then once we've done that new build, we, go ahead, we went ahead and cloned it and renamed the clone testing. And that is what I handed off to either user acceptance testing or to my QA team for you know, if they're doing manual testing or regression testing. It's that easy. So a sim simply coming in here and being able to access an initial environment and create copies of it and basically spin these up on demand as a developer, as a QA engineer, right? without having to be a network expert, without having to be a sysadmin expert, makes accommodating the need of these environments very, very easy. Basically, the idle time that's associated with needing these environments as we go through sprint execution becomes almost moot. So one of the elements that becomes important if we come back into Agile Manager, right? besides being able to access this information, we can start to capture this information as well. So for example, let's see if I've got one in here. I have fields now that tell me which environment that I'm interacting with when I'm doing my integration testing, when I'm doing my automation testing. Uh, this one hasn't, hasn't made it into automation testing yet. And so why that becomes important? Because now when I move back into this type of a view in my release backlog, I can start organizing my efforts, my user stories and defects, by what environment they're in. So you can see it now instead of just seeing a list of user stories and defects, I can now group those user stories and defects by what environment they're being worked on. So you can see here, I've got two user stories that are being worked on in my integration, Kristen's integration testing environment. Um, Russ has got two, and then I've got four user stories who aren't in an environment. So that gives me an indication of where they are as well. That maybe an environment needs to be spun up, need to be moved on to the next swim lane. So now we can really start to understand where the user stories are, which environments are being used to work on and test in these. And then on top of that, as we conclude Sprint 5, what happens is we can automatically spin up new environments. So there's a couple ways to accommodate this that I've had customers do this. And so one of the ways is at the start of Sprint 6, right, or the start of a Sprint, you can set up a user story to set up your environment. Or through SkyTap's automation with build servers like Jenkins or Hudson's, you can actually, when you do a build, have it copy or clone the previous configuration and spin up another. So automatically, when you run a build, Jenkins runs, and then basically when the developers move into the backlog meeting for Sprint 6, they will automatically see WebSphere plant Sprint 6 ready for them right here. So there's lots of ways that we can capture this information. There's lots of ways we can set up this automation. But the idea is the continuous movement of the development through the sprint so that there is no downtime, there is no idle time, so that your velocity is truly due to your ability to build as opposed to just 
having to deal with wait time around getting access to environments. So we come out of this system then into a sprint closure once we're done executing. And so within the sprint closure, we can see what was planned, what was added, and so forth. And so this is another way we can capture information. So we could basically add the environments as action items or under things that went well and things to improve the different environments, things like that. And so in SkyTap, coming off of a sprint, we have some ability to also look at um, consumption information. So we can see who's using what, who's doing what. The nice thing about SkyTap, it's designed to spin up, spin down environments. So in between sprints, as you saw, I can suspend my configuration so I'm not consuming resources, or I can store things as templates. So when I have a configuration, I can actually save a configuration off as a template, as a base template. So now, instead of just SkyTap templates, I have templates out here, right? I've created a Kristen Windows, and I have a, a Kristen web sphere, web sphere base out there as well. So a number of different ways to make spinning up these environments and resource consumption very flexible through this cloud-based service as well. We've been using this environment probably for two or three years, and the, the ease and use of you know, creating the environment that we need makes it our go-to cloud solution of choice. And so when we watch what, how we consume and who's consuming what, and, and that way it gives us a real bead on, okay, if we're not utilizing an environment, let's suspend it or let's bring it down. In addition to that, there are different things you can set up right now. I have got all of my configurations set up by sprints. We could also do this by projects. So this gives you an extra element of security um, if you want to limit what people can do, if you want to limit who can access what. You can introduce projects and now store your configurations inside projects. In addition to that, when you have a configuration you have set up, you can also publish this. So our third use case that we introduced in our PowerPoint Right, let's say a defect is found. This is the third use case in our environment. Well, the defect was found by a QA tester. Well, now what the QA tester can do is come in here, publish this URL, email that link or that URL to the developer, and all they have to do is access that link, and they can access this configuration right here. That's one way of limiting access to a configuration and then giving people limited access to it. So as you can see, it's just very easy to set up and to interact and to help with the collaboration between the two teams. So when we come back in here, you can see the combined features and capabilities of the two tools. So HP Agile Manager managing the Agile process and collecting that environment information and SkyTap allowing you to build your environments and clone those environments and easily duplicate those environments even though you're not a sysadmin person or a networking person. The two combined solutions really enable teams to ensure that the velocity of your sprints is, is very quick so you can continue to deliver what you need to deliver. So as next steps, um, most of the customers that have these issues with access environments, um, we, besides introducing these topics to them, what usually happens as next steps is they want to try something out. Either they want to try managing their process through Agile Manager, or they want to try setting up an environment in SkyTap's virtual cloud to see how easy this is. And both of those can be accommodated. So as next steps, we can set up sandbox environments for you and then give you access to them, and then you can try them out yourself. 